You know, the one thing that we seem to be able to agree on is that diets don't work. Where we seem to diverge a little bit is in what makes it a diet. So, uh, intentional weight loss is what we read in the studies. They don't call it a diet because diet in its, you know, uh, literal word means what we eat. It doesn't mean weight loss. But, you know, it's like fat. It's a loaded word. There's lots of colloquial, 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 I can't say that word, colloquial. Anyways, there are lots of common meanings <laughs> that get attached to these that aren't their literal bits. And so what's important to understand is that when we say diets don't work, when the research continues to flow in that says diets don't work, what it says in the research is that intentional weight loss doesn't work. Whoa, wait, hold up, Carrie. Of course weight loss works. People lose weight all the time. I can see the before and after pictures everywhere. <laughs> yeah. See, if I were a betting kind of person, which I'm not, but if I wanted to gamble a little bit, the one place that I might consider actually putting money down would be on whether or not someone is going to keep the weight off. Because it is almost guaranteed, like so close to being guaranteed, like 95% chance that they will not maintain the weight that they've lost. Now, some people will only <laughs> gain back some of the weight that they lost, but virtually everybody is gonna gain back at least some of the weight. And a very, very good chunk of those people are going to gain back even more weight than they lost in the first place. So if I were a gambling person, I would bet just by asking a simple question, are you currently trying to lose weight? Is weight loss a current goal of yours? Are your behaviors being geared towards losing weight? And if the answer is yes, I would quite comfortably bet money that within the next year, two, maybe three, that you will have uh, a good chunk of that weight back onto your body. Now, if the statistics, if the research continues to bring back these kinds of of numbers, and it's so incredibly consistent, then why do we keep doing it? Like, why are we so committed to this mindset of, I need to lose weight? Well, there, there's a ton, a ton, a ton of things that influence that. Um, who does a really good job with that? Uh, uh, Megan Jane Crabb, uh, who wrote um, Body Positive Power. Her uh, Instagram handle is Body Posse Panda. Um, she, one chapter, well, her whole book is spectacular, but there is one chapter, I want to say chapter 21. It's been a bit, I'm not entirely sure. She does a spectacular job at really bringing forward some of the, um, the underlying reasons for this as a culture. I'm going to stick with just you and me why you and I continue to invest our time and our money into a solution that does the exact opposite of what it's intended to do. So to pull it out of the weight sphere for a second, think about if you had, let's say a skin condition, and it was mild at first, but I told you that I had this medication or this lifestyle or this something, I had this intervention that was going to take care of it. Now the side effects are pretty harsh. Uh, it's not gonna be enjoyable, but it's going to rid you of your acne. And the part that's in a tiny print that you can't even see is that it says temporarily. And further down in the lingo and the jumble, it's gonna say, oh, and, 95% of people are going to end up having worse acne or whatever skin condition uh, within the next one to three, five years. 
Yeah, you might do it the first time because why not? Uh, the side effects the first time aren't so horrible. Skin seems to clear up like that and you think, this is awesome. But then over time, the side effects do start to show up. They do become intolerable and you stop and then uh, the, the skin condition gets amplified. So then at this point, you're still, you haven't read all the fine print, you don't really understand. So, okay, you go back on it again. Uh, and again, it works with relative ease, maybe not as quickly as the first time, but it's not so bad, you know? And it feels really good to not have the skin condition. And then the same thing happens. Shorter amount of time that you're able to stay on it, but eventually for sure you cannot stay on the medication and the acne comes back and it's even worse this time and this cycle keeps happening how many times would you take that medication before you think you know what i think the medication is actually making this worse not better Probably not too many times. We would probably link that up fairly quickly and we would be demanding an alternative option. But in diet world, we don't have alternative options. We may call them alternative options. We don't call them diets anymore. You know, I mean, Weight Watchers has dropped the Weight Watchers and now they're WW, which apparently does not actually stand for Weight Watchers at all. Um, there's programs like Noom. Uh, there are... Uh, those are the, those are two that I have exceptional frustration with. Um, but then there's also the multi-level marketing people. There's the intermittent fasting, there's the keto, there's paleo, there's the whole 30. There's like, oh my gosh, I could actually take up the whole day rhyming off all the different things that we may call it. Clean eating, lifestyle change, moderation. Um, all of these things are still diets and the reason why they're still the same medication is because of the fundamental flaw in this whole thing intentional weight loss doesn't work I'm pausing here because I'm pretty sure something in your brain just short-circuited and I just want to give you a moment to process that feeling try not to turn off the video just yet hang in here. Um, intentional weight loss is dieting, which results in weight gain. Now, let me just be super clear. Being in a bigger body is not a moral failing. It is not a flaw. It is not a problem. I have zero, zero issue with people in larger bodies. I am not suggesting that you should try and shrink your body. I am saying that if it's important to you that you do not gain weight. The very first thing that you must stop doing is trying to lose weight because it is the practice of intentionally trying to lose weight that is leading to the weight gain for many, many people. And when you think about how early we're putting children on diets now, it's before they even know how to read. So this is a like fundamentally something that has to shift. Intentional weight loss has to become a thing that is so archaic and so beyond that we go, what? People actually recommended that? That's what we need to create. And I know that that's hard to hear. I know it's hard to hear. I pursued weight loss for so, so long and there's still a little chipper in the back of my boy, in the back of my mind that routinely likes to challenge my current worldview. It really wants me to think that I could just do a quick cleanse, I could just do a quick whatever and I can lose weight and it's gonna be great, but it's not. So if we're not going to be pursuing weight loss anymore, well then what? then what are we going to pursue? And that is the coolest part about when you let go of the weight loss, you get to actually choose goals that matter to you. And that is the very first part of Living Life as a Rebel, the program that I run a couple times a year. And we start with, what are your values? What do you even actually care about? Because Yes, you think it's weight loss. It's like people who think that they want money. It's not that. It's what's behind that. What do you think that's going to give you? So if it's health, 
great. Whoa. I don't know if my screen just went blank on you, but it did on me. Um, so what's behind that? So is it health? Great. Let's pursue some health goals. If it's um, confidence, fantastic. Let's do that. If it's, uh, I don't know, why else do people want to lose weight? Confidence. Oh, fashion. Fashion might be a reason. Fantastic. Let's work on that. Like there are so many goals that we can work towards that have absolutely nothing to do with our weight. And it's really important because as I've just said, intentional weight loss is the issue. Now, let me address one quick thing here because you may have a little little fluttering in the back of your mind going, you yeah, get yeah, no, but Carrie, my intention for losing weight is health. It's good. It's a good motivator. So it's not the same. Well, unfortunately, the studies show otherwise. So your body, when you put yourself on any kind of weight loss regime, your body goes into high alert. Oh crap, what is she doing? Or he. Uh, speaking my own voice says she because I have the pronoun she. Now, I hate it when I go off on those tangents, I lose my train of thought. Um, so yes, the intention. So I see it on Facebook groups, I see it all over the place, especially in the health at every size of the intuitive eating group saying, but I, like it's for health reasons. Okay, your body does not know that. Your body does not go through a series of questions to go, okay, so are her motivations uh, noble enough and appropriate enough that we're gonna bypass um, all of our survival strategies? Are we just not gonna trip those wires to help her survive because her intention is good? It doesn't happen that way. Our body only sees the restriction and it absolutely floods our body with uh, all of the messages and hormones and neurotransmitters and other chemicals that say, I need food, I need food now, I need calorie dense food, I need food. And then we see those as moral failings, somehow that it's our willpower. It's just biology. It's our body's way of protecting ourselves from famine. And it doesn't know that you're trying to starve it for good reasons. It just knows that it's not gonna starve. So look, if this is a brand new concept to you, you may not even be here anymore. <laughs> but if you're still here, it means that some of this is ringing true. And I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts. Leave me a comment, throw me up an emoji, send me a personal message, but let me know what is happening for you right now as I say this. Because if you're still here, there's part of you that knows that this is true. Now, if you're a troll and that's why you're here, I'm just going to delete your message, so just don't bother. Uh, not interested in um, any fat shaming or fat phobia here, but I love, love uh, good, strong debate, and I love it when people challenge my thoughts. So if you are a respectful, thoughtful person that has some real challenges to this idea, love to hear them. Um, if you don't fall into that category, then please don't bother. I think that's all I wanted to say on this matter. So look, we're at that time of year. Um, the, the weight loss ads have been coming through my newsfeed at a rapid increasing rate, um, certainly on TV, um, news reports. I mean, all these things are putting us into this, oh my gosh, being fat is the worst thing that could ever happen in your life. And um, the pull to intentional weight loss will be overwhelmingly strong. And if you're in a place where you know that you that's not the way to go, but you know you need to do something, um, send me a message and let me introduce you to some topics and some resources that can help you navigate that path. Thanks for watching.